All right there, g'day. Rick and Musgrave Evans here again and welcome back. Now today, back in this studio, something a little different, going to paint a still life of these vegetables that I just picked out of the garden. Nice still life and later on I'll cook them up in a bit of a soup, but for now, they're going straight onto this clear prime Belgian linen, buckets of oil paint and pellet knives. Should be a bit of fun. Let's get into it. Well, let's start with the darkest darks. We'll block in a few of them and just get a general feel for the uh, subject matter and then we'll work it out as we go. Okay, we'll use alizarin crimson and some burnt sienna. Might get the ultramarine blue out. That ultramarine blue will really darken it because it's the opposite on the colour wheel. So, nice dark neutral colour there. That's nice. Okay, now, I'm just going to work out. I'll just quickly... Knock in a bit of a subject there. We're doing a tiny bit of drawing. Just a tiny bit of drawing and... <laughs> better have a better hold of the uh, pellet knife. There we go again. I'll just feel those in for now. Get warmed up. Now, it may appear that everything's just been... Well, I can go that way. Just feeling the subject. It may appear everything's just been randomly placed on the table. And to some extent it has, but at the same time I'm working with a flow of... I've got an organised composition in my head where the light's moving across and the painting's moving from left to right. So, working with that theory, I've even got, I know where the, the major colours and tones are slightly offset, they're going to be around about here and everything else is keyed down, everything else is echoing the main focal point, so in theory that's what's happening, let's see how we go. Get my dark in there, right, I'm just going to stand back and see what the heck's going on with all that. All right, those shapes are pretty much where I want them, I reckon. Let's just get into it again. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, bit of blue. Just going to knock in. Go a bit more yellow ochre than that. I reckon I'm going to get through this yellow ochre pretty quick. Palette knife is good for blocking in quite fast. It's burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. A bit more yellow ochre, burnt sienna, just trying to lighten the value a little, a little less blue. Block that in. There we go, like so. I'm trying to get as much of the painting covered as possible now, so going for the big impression, the biggest differences. Rubbing that paint in, going up to the edges. That's nice. Okay, let's keep going with that theory. A bit more yellow ochre, a bit more burnt sienna, a bit more ultramarine blue. Mix that up nicely. Down here, hang on, we'll go a little bit more blue than that and a little bit of white to lighten the value ever so slightly. So I've lined it and I've sent it a little bit more blue. Yeah. Lock that in. Just got to get this little puppy here. Stop that from banging around so much. All right. Let's just get a coverage, shall we? Just keep on going. Get as much, much of the canvas or linen in this case covered as possible. Get 
down up to the edges nicely. Yep. Yep. You're right. Let me have a look at that. I'll just put another clamp here. She's banging around a little too much. There we go. All right, yellow ochre and white. Burn sienna. A lighter value. A little bit of blue still to send it off a little. I just want to grey it a little bit. So that's making a brown, but that little bit of blue in there has slightly greyed her off a bit. Let's have a look. Stuff. Keep blocking it in. Just got to get a coverage here first and then we can work things out. More yellow ochre, blue, burnt sienna, more paint. Keep on going, keep on going, just get the paint on there. A lot of coverage needs to be done before I can really start working out exactly what I want to do here. A bit more white, a bit more yellow, a bit more blue. There was a bit too much burnt sienna in that one. We got here, right. Plenty of paint, nice. Alright, we're starting to get something. Let's have a look. That can go in there. So what I'm trying to do here is go for all the different tonal values in there, the lights and darks, basically. Get them roughly where I want them, and once I've got them roughly where I want them, then start reeling them in and more refinement, more refinement as needed. Alright. Now, let's go for a bit of a darker colour again. So we'll go burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. I just want to put a bit of dark in here. Nice and dark there. A little bit dark up there. Okay. Let's get some magenta and white. Just want to knock in a bit of this. It's also a little red on the side there. Burn sienna with that. Pull that across. A bit more magenta. Get the shadows like that. That carrot is very orange, and that spotlight shining down, that little light I've got there is sending things, the light, it's sending it particularly orange. So. I'll go with a bit of that. Just feeling in where the carrot's going to go. And I'm getting some much higher key colours here now. Nothing set in concrete at the moment, we're just feeling our way. These spuds are going to be looking around here. Let's put some of them in. Just lighten the tone. A bit of ochres. There's a little bit of red in those spuds. They're those nice colour, coloured potatoes. Let's put them in. I can go there. We'll throw one in here. I can go wherever you want them, I guess. You just need a pleasing composition. You don't have to be too literal to what you're looking at. What you're trying to do is getting a pleasing flow, a pleasing composition. So, let's see, that's there, that's there, right. I'm going to knock one in. Just here. Get the blues and the white now. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and a bit of white to make a lighter tone. 
that's just knocking in a it's a little bit darker than that but that's knocking in a fairly there's kind of a greenness to some of these shadows so I'm just knocking that in it's a little bit green there on the edges it's just the blue light from outside is reflecting around the blue light from outside you've got that warm light and then you've got the blue light from outside and when they're it's making the Everything that's lit up has got that nice warm tonal value, but everything in the shadows, because of the outside blue light, is causing real coolness through here. So I'll throw cool shadows around, and that gives you that warm and cool contrast. All right, a bit of Viridian Green and Yellow Ochre. It's going to... A little bit of Burnt Sienna with that. about there I reckon and a little bit there now we're gonna have to keep on going with this Viridian Green I just realized got to get that pumpkin in so I'll go Viridian Greens, Burnt Siennas, a bit of white to lighten the value what color is that pumpkin today a little bit more blue let's have a look It's a lighter value than that, so it's got a bit more white. Just feel it in. It's quite dark there. Half squint your eyes down a bit and you get to see that real where the light and the shadow is. Burnt sienna and green. A bit more green. Yellow ochre. A little bit. Just stood back for a minute and had a look at all that. Shapes are coming along, but we've got to get a light tone going on here for the stalk. The stalk is still on the onion. So we'll go some yellow ochres and some cat oranges. It's a very light tonal value, so we must keep it like that. Yeah. Some white bits and pieces peeling off the onion. Those light values. Some white and some magenta. Let's just feel, feel it in there. A bit more over on the side. Get some light values again. Move that around. Random marks. Really very light tonal value here. A little bit of subtle green coming through with the light, like I'm picking up on the different lights and tonal values here. That will actually live more there, I reckon. I'm going to take that one out with a bit of scraping, scrape back to that. Some cleaner values. I'll get rid of that one in a minute. Shorten that up a bit. That shadow. Yeah, Alright, things are coming along. I'll just keep moving, moving around. We'll go for some more burnt siennas and yellow ochre. I'll make a lighter value in here, slightly lighter value, a little bit cooler with the blue and the yellow ochre. Let's 
just going to lighten that tonal value off a little through here. Blend it in. I've already put the darks in, so it's easy to put the light on top of the darks. That's always an easier way to go. It's always, I mean, you can do the opposite. You can put the darks on top of lights, which I've done before, but it's easier to work the other way around to start off with. And if you need to at the end, well, then go ahead and throw a few darks over the lights. But because you're painting wet on wet, it'll be harder to do. It's much easier to get the darks in first. Just blend, blend, blend. Nice pattern of paint moving around here. Everything's soft and suggested for now. And then when you're more clear as to what you want, you can make it more permanent, more definite, and more defined the shape. Just Sense everything working around, then lock it into solid concrete once you've got everything exactly the right spot. I'm going to lower the key of this area, the tonal value, and lighten it there to send your eyes, because your eyes tend to work from dark to light, they'll move towards the light. So by keying this area down, which is visually unimportant, and sending your eyes more towards the subject, we'll dim it down here and brighten it up there. So just key down the bench so there's nothing too dominating visually. There we go. Just move the paint around, maybe a bit dimmy just over here too because you don't want your eyes to go too far that way. Okay, so we just block in and feel. Let's have a look at that. All right, let's get some lighter. Just gonna put some of those marks on those, that pumpkin, those lighter tonal values. It's a spotty looking pumpkin. Pick it out, don't get too defined for now. Like I said, I'll work it out as time goes on. Light. There's, the roots are coming off the base of that onion. Just keep moving around. Let's go for some high key greens. Green and yellow ochre and white. Stick some of those lighter values on top for the carrot. Let's work in some of the real high key values. We've got white, cad yellow deep, really high key stuff. Just want to re-establish this little piece here where this is going to actually go. Make it more defined. Can be there. Cool the greens down in here on the underside of it. Pick out that more distinctive shadow right on the edge of it there. around like so, getting there with that one. All right, well, we've got it all blocked in. We'll just keep moving around and keep on refining and adjusting things that need to be adjusted. 
the edge of this spud here has a bit of glowing light coming from everything here, bouncing in, nice colour there. So we'll stick that in. Just, I've got those spuds very ill defined at the moment, now I'm just going to pick them out a little, make them a little more obvious, like so. Depending on where they are as to how much importance they need. This is the main focal area, so everything is like an echo to the main event. Start getting some really high key colours. Just get a bit of the detail here on the onion. What do we got? Very light and bright colours as accents. On top of the layers, onions have layers. Onion boy. Pick out where the light's hitting those layers. Alright, so I'm going to get some yellow ochre and some light higher key colours, burnt sienna yellow ochre, lighter values. I'll just lighten this shadow area up here, just behind the pumpkin, because I want to send your eyes from here across. So by lightening that value, it'll pull your eyes across in theory. So I'm just mixing that lightness into it. Blending it nicely. Good variety of marks. Alright, I'll just grab some white from over here. There we go. A bit of white, make a high key turquoise again. Like I've done in other videos where I use the white and the Viridian green, really high key. When you half mix that with pure yellow ochre, it's a very light, bright olivey green. So it's great for picking out the high key colours on the carrot here. Let's have a look. Knife on edge. Gonna pick out some of those bright colours. A little bit duller as I go over here. Alright, well it's all blocked in, it's all there, but I just gotta keep refining now. Like I said, I start off very broad. No real defined statement anywhere and slowly when I feel like things are in the right spot just keep adding and when I really think I've got it then really start to bang the refinement in the visually most important areas. So let's have a look. Let's get some high key stuff here. Knife on edge. High key cads and whites. Just want to put it on here on the edge of the parsnip so it really pops like that. Keep working around, get some more yellow ochre and white. Just keep moving around, constantly finishing things that need to be done. I'm off in the shadows here, there's some beautiful, I left, when I picked this particular onion, I left a lot of the stalk on it, which is adding a lot of great variety in the shadows here, so I'll just put that in. Also down the bottom here, as you can see, I've been picking out with the edge of the knife really fine marks where the roots are also still attached. And that gives the illusion of detail, isn't it, when you put some very refined marks. Very refined marks. On the edge of softness. Everything's soft and fuzzy and nondescript. And as soon as you get a really fine mark, put it on. It jumps, it really pops. Yellow ochre burnt sienna. A little 
little bit of green left on the stalk too, put that in. All right, well things are sort of getting there. Now what I'll do is, got a lot of it blocked in. I reckon I'll put some of the darks, re-establish some of the darks. They got a little bit lost here and there. So let's go some more burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. That makes a pretty good dark. Where do we want that? It's a little bit under here. Maybe a bit more burnt sienna for that one. A little bit under there. A little bit more through there. I'll just put some in. I'll take some away too, but I just want to put a little bit in here and there and then maybe take it back. I'll just check out what's going on first. All right, those few extra darks just increased the tonal value a bit more, brought it back to life. It was getting a little bit mid-tone. Now <laughs> we've got some good stuff. Now let's go the other way and get some good highlights. with the tiniest little bit of cad yellow. really make it start to pop. And because those carrots were freshly pulled out of the ground, they've actually still got a little bit of roots left on them. Just suggesting the finest marks in the easiest seen spot will just get that knife on the edge. Hang on, make that line a bit fine on that. Just want to pull in some of those super detailed roots and that'll really start to add to the super refinement of it then and make the thing look like even though there's a lot of big marks in the painting it'll make the painting look like it's super refined it's an illusion all right well things are starting to come along but what I want to show you guys, at the moment, as you can see, I've got this light directly overhead here, lighting up the subject. But I've also got another light coming from up here, so you guys can see the painting and myself. But what I prefer, the actual view of this still life that I prefer, is when I take the upper light off. And I'll just do it for a second and show you. We'll turn that light off. Now you can see it's a bit dark here, you can't really see what's going on. There's a bit of light coming from outside, I guess. But here, if we look here, you'll see that the light and shadow is much more distinct and you can see the light playing on the pumpkin there whereas when it was lit up before it was much less obvious and those little segments that I'm showing you of the actual subject just those quick couple of second segments while I'm painting of the actual subject itself I'm turning the light off so you can see the light and shadow as it is it's a stronger light and shadow version so what I want to do as I'm finishing this I'll keep the light on but I've got my memory going so I can see that stronger tonal contrast when that light's off. So I'll put the light back on, but I'll work with that theory. All right. There we go, light's back on, okay. All right, well, she's coming together, starting to look nice. Just keep on working around. Now, I'll grab a few more highlights. Got to stand out of the way. I'm used to having the camera on the other side because I'm left-handed, as you may have noticed. When I've got the camera on this side, sometimes I get in the way. So it just had to be the way I set it up today. But usually I like to have the camera on the other side so you can, you've got an open view as to, as to what I'm mixing. So I'll try and keep out of the way as much as I can. Just got the knife on edge, just cleaning up a few marks here and there. Because like I've said before, we've got a lot of out of focus going on. Now just pull in the detail on top of it and you'd be surprised just how much 
a slight finger there, you'll be surprised how much that really starts to pull it all in. A few little marks here and there. Okay. Maybe just another fine line through here, which can be one of the roots. Very fine, keep it really super fine. It's casting shadow onto the table as well as I drag the shadow into the light source. Okay. All right, I reckon, I reckon that'll do. I reckon we've got our big impression. Looks pretty good to me, got the good flow, like I said. The concept of the picture was uh, moving from left to right, building up in intensity with light and colour and tonal values and chromatic saturation, that's intensity of colour. Building up to the grand finale here where we've got the most refined bits of detail, a little twiggy, little bits of roots, all of this attached to it with a more of an out of focus backdrop for that to sit on. So the background is kind of like a, yeah, basically an out of focus backdrop for the main subject to rest upon. And, and jump out. And if you brought up the background more, well then the subject, the main focal point's going to be not as obvious. It's always about contrast paintings. And in this case, these really fine lines are contrasting against the, the nothingness. Okay, happy with the little subtle colours I put in the spuds. These are nice red spuds. There's just a few red highlights. And where I put the intensity of colour of them is right where they turn into the shadow. So you've got your light source, it's not so red. You got your shadow source of the spud, not as red again, but right where they turn, you stick your beautiful lizard and crimson there and they really pop. Happy with the carrot, a little bit of foliage, suggest the foliage, but not too much. Like I said, I want to draw your eyes away from there into here. So the detail here is less than the refinement here. These things are placed over here, like I was talking about composition earlier. I did compose this picture. I didn't just randomly throw all the stuff on the table. So. Everything's moving across to the grand finale and these things here are to stop your eyes going any further. So it's like a build up, peak and then back off. Same with the background, you can see the darkest tones there, you're building up into the lighter tone in the middle ground and then backing off. So it's a nice flow through the picture. You're playing with tone and colour and detail and using that to drive the eye through the painting. Alright, enough of that said, let's get that camera off, come buzzing in. Have a close look. Thank you.